This is one of the nice little features and tricks of having the stand. You can flip the black arm up. Good morning, modern steaders. In this morning's video, we're going to be diving deeper on the tools we use to build our modern homestead and the tools we use all the time here at Lumna Acres. We're going to be talking more about clamps, sawzalls, and the chop saw. These are tools that we use all the time here at Lumna Acres. Let's dive in. Before we get started, I'm just going to say I'm glad today's not the Friday update. It's 20 below zero out there this morning. Way too cold for the outside filming. I'm glad it's tool time. So let's dive in on clamps. We use clamps all the time here around Lumna Acres. They came in so handy when we were building the outdoor kitchen. If you haven't seen any of the outdoor kitchen build, I'll put a link right here to our playlist. But when I was up high working and I needed something to hold the board in place for me, I would use a clamp where I could. If the boards weren't tight, they were, had a gap in them, I could use one of my pipe clamps, put them on there and suck it tight. If we're gluing something up, if we're cutting something and we need something to get held, the clamps, think of a clamp as your third, fourth, fifth set of hands where you can use them. So let's get right to it. The pipe clamp are nice. We have a two foot section pipe clamp. These clamps you can make as long as you have a piece of pipe for. You can go to the hardware store and you can buy threaded pipe. So one end, you have the lever that slides and when you let go it locks it in place but you can always push it up you can take it off the top end is threaded on Let's see if I can get this one off oh that sounds good at least just thread right on any black iron pipe so you can get whatever length you need and that's what holds the top pot on. Oh yeah. I'll have a link in the description down below to our Amazon page that's going to have all the tools listed that we've been talking about today. All the tools that we've been talking about in the whole video series and a lot of the stuff we use around here at Lumna Acres. We have our Urban Quick Grip Clamp. These are nice, they're lightweight. You can use them in a lot of areas. I'll show you some few features for them. You got your button to slide and adjust them. When you get them close, you just take your grip. And you wanna release it, you pull your trigger. They make a small, they have these in all different lengths too. I'll put these on our Amazon page. They have the small ones, which are nice for holding things down. We have metal ones that do the same thing as the Irwin. And we also have this little Bosch one. You're probably thinking I'm crazy. I got all these different size clamps, these different styles. There's so many different things you can use clamps for that you need them for. Sometimes one style won't fit, but you can get another style to fit. Sometimes this style's not long enough. Trust me, when you start using clamps, you'll realize, wow, there is a reason there's so many different style ones. Hold up, intermission. This is what we're dealing with. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Yeah, you. What are you doing? It's a shelf for tools, not for cats. I always wanted to be the center of attention. Yeah, we're talking about you. Right now, let's dive deeper into our Sawzall. We have DeWalt Sawzall. We have DeWalt just because it's what we have. At the time when I bought this, we had just bought our first house. And we were doing renovation and it was plaster and lab all on the inside. And we needed to be able to demo it and demo it quickly and easily. So we wanted, we needed a Sawzall. The reason I bought the DeWalt at the time, let me show you. So when we burnt, when we burnt, when we bought our first house, I'm pretty sure it's 2005 was the year we bought our first house. I'm terrible with dates, but 
The reason we bought the DeWalt over the other saws at the time, DeWalt had the quick unlock, where before the main style was an Allen key. Every time you wanted to take out your blade, you had to take your Allen wrench out, tighten and untighten your Allen bolt, which was a huge pain in the butt. So when I saw this style, I was like, yes! Let me show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if we can see in there, but in here is where your blade goes. And by lifting up on the lever, it unlocks and locks the pin that locks it in place. We can insert our blade, let the lever down, and it's locked in place. Where before, every time you wanted to do that, you had to take your Allen key out, tighten and untighten it. Pain in the butt. So that's why we have the DeWalt. The other nice thing is, is I don't believe this is an option on all sawzalls. Don't hold me to it. You have your blade, and when you're cutting, you cut this way 90% of the time. But sometimes when you're cutting, you're in a tight spot, and when you're doing it this way, you don't have enough room or your hand's in the way. So with the, this DeWalt one, you're able to take it out, and you can flip it around, and now you can cut this way. It's awkward to cut this way, but sometimes you need it to finish a cut to get into a tight spot. So if you have an option of getting a Sawzall where you can turn the blade around, I'd highly recommend it. Some of them now have it so you can go this way. The DeWalt doesn't. But a Sawzall works really well for getting into tight places. It doesn't make a very nice beautiful cut. It's not precise. It's more for demolition work and for cutting a crude hole. If you can work fancy with a sawzall, that's awesome. I've never been able to cut fancy and straight with one. Get pretty good. But the other thing, they vibrate like a son of a gun. My forearms get itchy afterwards, especially if you've been using them for a while. If I don't have to use my sawzall, I tend not to. But you do need it sometimes. And when you need it, you need it, and it's great to have it. It's fast, and you get into a lot of places other saws can't get into. You can cut metal, you can cut wood, you can cut nails. You can do a lot of work with your sawzall, especially demolition work. The last tool we're going to talk about today is one of my all-time favorites and one of my go-to tools all the time. That is our chop saw and our stand that goes with the chop saw. The stand with the chop saw you don't need. You can make, put it on a workbench, you can make a regular bench for it, a small stand for it. But the stand that you can get for these nowadays makes the tool portable and more versatile. You can do so many more jobs with it, and the jobs you do, you can do them faster because you can bring your chop saw and your stand right to the job you're working on. And they have a lot of nice features on the stand that make it more versatile and you can be a little bit more productive with it. The legs collapse and fold up, so it makes it for easier transportation. I think Figaro is a tool guy too. You like tools? So the stand, the stand is constructed out of aluminum, and then the braces are steel, and the brackets right here are steel. Go over a few things here, your push buttons for folding and collapsing and folding your legs and keeping them locked up. Over here you have a plastic knob, it's on a cam, you loosen it and you're able to slide out your arms. I'm not sure what this groove in the center is for. If somebody knows that, you could leave it in the comments down below. I don't know if there's a special trick or if it's just made this way for strength and more durability. You have to get brackets that you put on your chop saw that holds your chop saw to your stand. And the way to do that, the easiest way I found to hook my chop saw to my stand is, is to hold your chop saw like this, get the front of the feet in place, and then lower the back end until you hear a click. If you don't hear a click, it's not locked in and you need to check your brackets. I'll show you the brackets I was talking about. 
and then it has a plastic handle on the back side. I'll show you in a minute when we take it off, but you pull the handles and then you tip it forward. But you bolt it to front and the back. It's adjustable so it fits more than just one saw. This is a DeWalt stand, but you could use the brackets in the stand on multiple saws, even if it's not a DeWalt. The saw on the back left corner has a pin. If you push your saw down, pull your pin out, that unlocks it. If you want to lock it, you push it down all the way, push it in, and it locks it in place for you. This is a miter compound saw, so it'll go, it'll cut your angles both to the left and to the right. And then on the back side, it also... You have a handle right here to unlock so you can do your miters. So if you loosen up the handle on the back side, you can adjust up to a 45 this direction. And also, there's a pin on the back. If you pull that out, it lets you go the other direction as well. And every time you go to use your saw, you should make sure you zero it out up and down and side to side. And then most chop saws will have a place to hold your tool. This right here is the tool you need to change your blade. You got a Torx bit on one end to undo your blade cage. You take that off and then you can undo your nut and change your blade. I'll show you a few reasons why the chop saw stand comes in really handy other than making it more portable. But you can loosen up your knob here, slide your arms, and you can cut long 2x6s, 2x8s. Just adjust your arm and that supports your board for you. And then you can make your cut. So when you cut in, this is your excess end. It's not just falling on the ground and pinching your blade. Your arm on that end is catching it for you. The arm has little T-nuts on each side. And that's so you can raise and lower them and level your board. Earlier I was saying the stand can make you more productive and faster. This is one of the nice little features and tricks of having the stand. You can flip the black arm up right here. If you have, know what length your board needs to be, you put it in place, you measure your board, make a mark, bring your blade down and go, okay, this is the right length. Now you lock your arm in place. It's not going to move and say you got 10, 20, 30, 40 cuts to make that are all the same. You have a nice stop. Your board's not going nowhere and you don't got to keep measuring. The other nice thing about the stand is you don't have to keep your saw in the same position. So say you have a bunch of little cuts to make and your arm's too far away. That's also fine. Just move your, just close your arm up. Grab your handles to loosen up your chop saw. Now by moving our saw all the way over to the end, we can cut as short as 13 and 5 eighths of a length of board repetitively without having to keep measure. We can just extend it and keep going from there. I hope you can take away a couple of useful hints from today's video. If you did, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any of your own tricks you'd like to share with the Modern Stetter community, leave it in the comments down below. We can learn and grow together, which is so much fun. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.